Today, for the first time, ousted U.S. Ambassador Marie Ivanovich told her side of the story publicly as lawmakers and legal counsel from both sides attempted to paint a picture. Getting rid of Ambassador Ivanovich helped set the stage for an irregular channel that could pursue the two investigations that mattered so much to the president, the 2016 conspiracy theory, and most important, an investigation into the 2020 political opponent he apparently feared most, Joe Biden. The American people expect their president to use the authority they grant him in the service of the nation, not to destroy others to advance his personal or political interests. In fact, Democrats have been vowing to oust President Trump since the day he was elected. So Americans can rightly suspect that his phone call with President Zelensky was used as an excuse for the Democrats to fulfill their Watergate fantasies. Like my colleagues, I entered the Foreign Service understanding that my job was to implement the foreign policy interests of this nation as defined by the President and Congress and to do so regardless of which person or party was in power. I had no agenda other than to pursue our stated foreign policy goals. The Obama administration did not ask me to help the, the Clinton campaign or harm the Trump campaign, nor would I have taken any such steps if they had. Partisanship of this type is not compatible with the role of a career foreign service officer. With respect to Mayor Giuliani, I have had only minimal contact with him, a total of three, none related to the events at issue. I do not understand Mr. Giuliani's motives for attacking me, nor can I offer an opinion on whether he believed the allegations he spread about me. Clearly, no one at the State Department did. What I can say is that Mr. Giuliani should have known those claims were suspect, coming as they reportedly did from individuals with questionable motives and with reason to believe that their political and financial ambitions would be stymied by our anti-corruption policy in Ukraine. Our Ukraine policy has been thrown into disarray, and shady interests the world, the world over have learned how little it takes to remove an American ambassador who does not give them what they want. Did anyone at the State Department ever express concerns about your job performance? No. Now, during this conversation, did the Deputy Secretary tell you about your future as the ambassador to Ukraine? Well, he told me I needed to leave. What did he say? Um, he said that, um, I mean, there was a lot of back and forth, but ultimately he said uh, the words that, you know, every Foreign Service under uh, officer understands, the President has lost confidence in you. That was, you know, a terrible thing to hear. And, um, and I said, well, you know, I guess I have to go then. Uh, but no, no real reason was offered as to why I had to leave and why it was being done in such a manner. Did you have any indication that the State Department had lost confidence in you? No. And were you provided any reason why the President lost confidence in you? No. In your opening statement that you had left Ukraine by the time of the July 25th call between President Trump and President Zelensky. When was the first time that you saw the call record for this phone call? When it was released publicly at the end of September, I believe. And prior to reading that call record, were you aware that President Trump had specifically made reference to you in that call? No. What was your reaction to learning that? I was shocked, absolutely shocked, and, and devastated, frankly. What do you mean by devastated? I was shocked and devastated that um, I would feature in a phone call between two heads of state uh, in such a manner uh, where um, President Trump said that I was bad news to another world leader uh, and that I would be going through some things. Um, so I was, it, it was, it was a terrible moment. Uh, a person who saw me actually reading the transcript said that the color drained from my face. I think I even had a physical reaction. The next excerpt when the pre president references you <clears throat> was a short one. 
But he said, well, she's going to go through some things. What did you think when President Trump told President Zelensky and you read that you were going to go through some things? I didn't know what to think, um, but I was very concerned. What were you concerned about? She's going to go through some things. It didn't sound good. It sounded like a threat. Ambassador Ivanovich, uh, as we sit here testifying, the president is attacking you on Twitter. Um, and I'd like to give you a chance to respond. I'll read part of one of his tweets. Everywhere Marie Ivanovich went turned bad. She started off in Somalia. How did that go? Uh, he goes on to say, uh, later in the tweet, is a U.S. president's absolute right to appoint ambassadors. First of all, uh, Ambassador Ivanovich, the Senate has a chance to confirm or deny an ambassador, do they not? Yes, advise and consent. But would you like to respond to the president's attack that everywhere you went turned bad? Well, I, I mean, I don't... I don't think I have such powers, uh, not in Mogadishu, Somalia, Somalia, not in other places. I actually think that um, where I've served over the years, um, I and others have demonstrably um, made things better, you know, for the U.S. as well as for the countries uh, that I've served in. Uh, Ukraine, for example, where there are huge challenges, including, you know, on the issue that we're discussing today of, of corruption huge challenges, but they've made a lot of progress since 2014, including in the years that I was there. And I think in part, uh, I mean, the Ukrainian people get the most, um, the most credit for that. But a part of that credit goes to the work of the United States and, um, and to me as the ambassador in, in, the United, uh, in Ukraine. And now the president in real time is attacking you. What effect do you think that has on other witnesses' willingness to come forward and expose wrongdoing? Well, uh, it's very intimidating. It's designed to intimidate, is it not? I, I mean, I can't speak to what the president is trying to do, but I think the effect is to be intimidating. I want to let you know, Ambassador, that some of us here take witness intimidation very, very seriously. Do you believe your removal was part of some scheme to, to make it easier for um, elements of the Ukrainian establishment to um, do things counter to U.S. interests? I think that's certainly what the Ukrainian establishment hoped. I think that in addition, uh, there were Americans, um, these two individuals, um, who uh, were working with Mayor Giuliani, Mr. Parnas, and Mr. Fruman, who have recently been indicted by the Southern District of New York, who um, indicated that they wanted to uh, change out the ambassador. And I think they must have had some reason for that. You certainly can understand that the president, aware of Minister Vakov's you know, statements, aware of what Mr. Leshenko was up to, what Ambassador Chali was up to, um, <clears throat> and these other elements that we've discussed, that there certainly forms a reasonable basis to wonder whether there are influential, uh, you know, elements of the Ukrainian establishment that were out to get the president. I, you know, again, I mean, I can't speak for uh, what um, President Trump thought or what others thought. I would just say that um, those elements that you've recited um, don't seem to me to be the Ukrainian, you know, kind of a, plan or a plot of the Ukrainian government to work against um, President Trump or, or, or anyone else. I mean, they're isolated um, incidents. Mm -hmm. We all know, I'm coming to find out myself, that public life can be, you know, people are critical. And um, that does not mean that someone is, um, or a government is undermining uh, either a campaign or uh, interfering in elections. And I would just remind again that our own U.S. intelligence community has conclusively determined that the, um, those who interfered in the election were in Russia.
Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.